Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Leanna if you're new and today I follow a Bob Ross tutorial which resulted in the painting behind me. A painting so impressive that my dad literally thought I bought it to which my sister, an art student, chortled and said who would buy that? <laughs> me? Well, I'm somewhere in the middle. I think it's somewhat impressive and also somewhat ugly. Between my sister and I, she undoubtedly is the better artist. There's no denying that anymore. When I was 10, maybe it could be argued that I drew better, but now she has tortoise and the haired me so hard and left me in the dust that there's no catching up at all. We took the same art classes, you see, but she practiced way more than me and even had a cursed anime drawing phase that she likes to pretend didn't happen, so she definitely went through it. Back when we took art classes together, I may as well have been given the nickname one sitting Leanna because I did not and still do not have the patience to finish a piece of artwork over several sittings over a long period of time. My determination to finish things that I start immediately is a virtue and a vice but especially a vice when it comes to artwork. You ever see the meme of that horse where the back end is like really detailed and it looks like someone put in a lot of effort to draw it and then the front end is just fudged like a little kid drew it? Well. That's usually how my artwork goes. Mainly because it's impossible to maintain the same level of effort for several, several hours. And this time was no different. As for why this painting is directly on my desk, here's a little backstory. Back when I was a teenager, I used to tape a lot of things on my desk quotes from TV shows and movies that I liked, angsty quotes from books, pictures of me and my sister looking super ugly just for fun, and eventually those were torn down. Not very carefully, may I add, but there was nothing to be done because this desk is made of compressed sawdust, so tearing everything off resulted in this monstrosity, and that is not a sight that I wanted to behold, so I decided to paint over it. I remember watching Bob Ross as a kid and feeling super entranced with his artwork and feeling super impressed that he could create something so realistic with just a few strokes. So I decided to find a painting of his that I liked and duplicate it on my desk for a fun therapeutic experience that would result in something beautiful. This painting is called Autumn Fantasy. For me, my autumn, winter, spring, and summer fantasies all involve Henry Cavill instead of a beautiful landscape. However, if I painted Henry Cavill, that would probably result in my parents asking a lot of uncomfortable questions. So I decided to stick with the beautiful landscape instead. So Bob usually likes to paint with oil paints, but we didn't have any oil paints. And we also didn't have a canvas. So we were already starting off with several dangerous differences, but that was not gonna stop me. We had acrylic paint and a flimsy cardboard backing. We were gonna work with it. First, I began by laying down a layer of white. We didn't have any gesso, so I decided to use some white acrylic. And this turned out to be a very bad decision, but you gotta work with what you got. So I just covered the whole thing with white so I had a base to work with. My sister was adamant that I just keep it white because she knew that this painting was going to be a disaster. But I didn't care. I wanted the autumn fantasy on my desk and nothing was going to stop me. So the first thing that Bob told us to do was to just go in with some X's to create a gigantic pink sky. Before I started, I told my art student sister that I needed her next to me for damage control because if I messed up, I needed her to be there to swoop in and fix all my mistakes. Otherwise, I was going to have to look at an ugly painting for the rest of my life and we could not have that. At a certain point, I just decided I should have my sister paint with me as opposed to just being there for damage control because there was such a big surface area and there's no denying it. I needed help. I was kind of freaking out with the way she was going super ham on the sky, but she was the seasoned artist, not me, so I trusted her. After the pink sky, Bob told us to cover the sky with brown. And while it looked great for him, it looked like I was smearing shit all over the place. But you know, it was okay. My brush strokes were a lot streakier than his, but again, it was because he was painting on canvas and I was painting on a cardboard sheet. But somehow I have the feeling that even if Bob Ross were painting on this cardboard sheet, his would still look really good. It was around this time that Irene brought it to my attention that I could add water to acrylic to kind of thin it out. And my whole life was changed. It added a lot of convenience into my life over the next six hours that it took to complete this painting. Next came the beautiful mountain peaks, which I was very nervous about. This was the center of the painting, the attention grabber. The peaks would make or break the whole thing. Very high stakes. I've always thought that painting the palette knife was great fun because it gives acrylic that textured look that you get with oils that you just can't get with brushes. At this stage, my mom walked in and thought we were done, so I thought that was a pretty good sign. After we finished the mountains, I was pretty satisfied with the work that we had done. Then came the trees, and this required us to mix more and more brown. Bob Ross likes to use a fan brush to create his fir trees, but this was pretty stressful for us because we didn't have a fan brush, but uh, we did have a fan brush that was supposed to be a nail brush. This fan brush is a lot softer it seems than the one that he was using in his video. Okay, there's your friend. Skinny legend friend. Thick friend. Mine is so ugly, dude. 
The water was fun to do. I was really worried about the water not turning out like water, but it actually came together in the end without much effort. Bob Ross did this magical thing where he kind of just smeared the shadows and made it look super perfect, but unfortunately because we weren't using oil paint, it kind of didn't have the same effect. So what we ended up doing was mixing our own shade for the reflection and just kind of patching it up. And it actually turned out pretty okay. Well, actually, it kind of looks like crap, but it's okay. Nobody's looking super close. When it came time to do the trees on the side, we kind of took some artistic liberty to kind of arrange them so that it looked decent. There was a lot of horizontal space since my desk was a lot wider than his canvas. Adding the highlight on the trees was great fun, and I actually really like how the trees on the side turned out. However, there were some bushes that are just straight up offensive. <laughs> At the end, I decided to paint the ceiling brown just to connect it with the brown at the top of the painting. Yes, I could have left it white, but there were several tears in the compressed sawdust surface that you could still see through the base layer of white paint, so I definitely wanted to cover it. So I basically smeared brown all over it, to which my sister said it really looks like I'm smearing crap. Originally, I wanted to paint a galaxy on top like Joanna Cedia did with her ceiling, but my sister roasted me for it and said it was very 2015. But you know, the brown on the ceiling kind of resulted in a seamless painting on all four walls, so I'm pretty happy with that choice to be honest. And I do like how the sides are darker and the center is brighter, so it kind of creates a vignette feel. This is the final result. Honestly, it could have been worse, and I haven't painted in ages, and I'm not even sure if I knew how to paint in the first place, so I'm pretty satisfied that it actually looks like a landscape. I thought doing a Bob Ross painting was going to be very therapeutic for me, but it really wasn't. It was actually quite stressful. If you want to paint your desk in a very visible area and you have no idea how to paint, then I highly recommend having an art student handy in case you mess up or just want to give up. But yeah, despite the overwhelmingness of some parts, this was actually quite fun, and I think I would do it again. I can't believe that I thought I wanted to get into painting as another quarantine hobby, but uh, yeah, honestly I might not because it was actually quite stressful. But who knows? I'm actually thinking of maybe getting some canvases because maybe small scale paintings will be a little less stressful than this. For now, that's it. And that is also it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! This painting is called Autumn Fantasy. For me, my autumn, winter, spring, and summer fantasy. <laughs> this painting is called Autumn Fantasy. For me, my autumn... <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Ew, he's 37. Only? <laughs>